What is up you guys? Welcome back to another one. If you are new to the channel, I am Go Pony, and today we are in the new 2020 Nissan 370Z, courtesy of Faulkner Nissan in Mechanicsburg, PA. I am super excited to be in this thing today. This car is a legend. This is one of the best, no, that would be an understatement. This is the best drift car out there right now, still to this day. And there is plenty of things new for the 2020Z. And of course, I will be going over everything about this one today. So, as always, you guys, let's start with pricing. And so, as expected, there will be several different trim levels for the 2020 Nissan 370Z. First one being the base. That is the one we have today. That one starts at $30,090. Then you have the Sport for $33,820. Sport Touring for $39,490. 50th Anniversary Edition. That is the new trim level for the 2020Z. That one is going to start at $36,420. And lastly, of course, the Nismo starting at $45,790. But to that, regardless of trim level, though, the power plant is actually going to be the same with some slight modifications to the Nismo. And I'll go over that, of course. Powering this beast is going to be a 3.7 liter naturally aspirated V6, putting out 332 horsepower at 7,000 RPM, 270 pound-feet of torque available at 5,200 RPM. Power, of course, sent to the rear wheels through your choice of either a six-speed manual, which comes standard, that is the one we have today, or a seven-speed automatic, giving you a zero to 60 time of approximately five seconds flat. Top speed comes in at 155 miles per hour, and MPG numbers come in at 70 in the city 26 highway for the manual 19 city 26 highway for the automatic and either way this one will take premium unleaded fuel and another cool thing i always like to mention with the z's because if you are someone who enjoys modifying cars and the z is a very modifiable car to start with this one does have a twin intake system so one of the first mods a lot of people get for the z is a cold air intake or really any car but with the Z, you actually have dual intakes. So if you were to get that, you will have two cold air intakes on both sides of the engine. So I always find that pretty cool. So I have to mention it. But so like I was mentioning, the Nismo Z is slightly different. Same engine set up a little more power coming in at 350 horsepower at 7,400 RPM, 276 pound feet of torque available at 5,200. Again, sent to rear wheels through actually a six speed or a seven speed automatic for the Nismo. Kind of interesting there. Zero to 60 time, only a 10th of a second better than the car we're in today being the base trim so 4.9 seconds there same mpgs again as the non nismo z and i did want to also mention there is downshift rev matching if you went with the sport trim level and up we of course have the base so there's not going to be any automatic rev matching in this one today this is more of the purest version i guess you could say but did want to mention that that's actually standard for both the six speed manual and the seven speed automatic believe it or not and also if you went with that seven speed you will also get magnesium paddle shift just like the GTR, so that is pretty darn cool as well. So I had to mention that. But having said all that, I think you guys know what time it is. Let's go ahead and do an acceleration test in the 370Z in the six speed. Let's see how quickly we can get this one here up to speed. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Gosh darn it, this thing's cool. Yeah, that feels like 60 in five seconds. That was fun, man. I missed the six speed manual. That was. That was fun. <laughs> but anywho, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And so for the base 370Z, it is going to differ slightly. Base 370Z gives you 12.6 inch ventilated front discs, 12.1 inch ventilated rear discs. However, if you went with the sport trim level and up, you are going to get 14 inch ventilated front discs with four piston front calipers, 13.8 inch ventilated rear discs. And that is actually one of the first things I noticed on the Z. This thing comes to an amazing stop, even though we have the base trim level level today so even if you didn't go with the sport it's amazing stopping power in this thing so definitely no issues there then touching on suspension and handling a little bit did want to first start by mentioning there is a carbon fiber composite drive shaft that comes standard on all trim levels that is definitely nice and one of those key components found in high performance cars so love that limited slip rear differential is going to come with the sport trim level and up so that is going to be there for you as well but so up front you're going to find a double wishbone aluminum alloy front suspension with aluminum sub 
frame in the back a multi-link aluminum alloy rear suspension with front and rear stabilizer bars coming standard also sport tuned shock absorbers i guess as expected for a car like the z nismo trim is also going to retune that suspension a little bit more with larger stabilizer bars as far as the steering feel goes i think i've got a pretty good clip of that in the parking lot there definitely a nice weight to it not the heaviest steering feel not as heavy as my mustang let's say but still a very very nice weight to the 370z no issues for me and as far as ride quality goes it is pretty much as expected again don't have any issues there and if i remember correctly of course the nismo you are going to feel a little bit more of the road if you went with that just because of the upsized wheels of course whenever you upsize wheels you're going to feel more of the road so keep that in mind and when it comes to cabin noise the only thing i'm really hearing is that beautiful engine sound of that naturally aspirated v6 when you hit the gas but other than that cabin noise isn't really a problem and then of course rounding out the performance segment of this review it wouldn't be a full review without touching on visibility of course everybody knows with the 370z it's not one of its strong suits but it is one of those things i guess you could imagine if you were to live with this car on a daily basis it is something i'm sure you will get used to and it is not that big of a car to start with so really visibility shouldn't be too much of an issue there side mirrors look perfectly fine so you're not going to have any issues there another cool thing with the side mirrors of course you have those fender arches which i think that is a good segment for me to go ahead let's transition to the exterior of this beautiful 2020 nissan 370z all right and so when it comes to the exterior let me first start by giving you guys a little bit of what's new for the 2020 nissan 370z first off being the 50th anniversary edition that is of course one of the new trims as i have already mentioned as far as the color combinations go that's what i wanted to mention there is a silver and black color combination for the 50th anniversary edition also a white and red color combination so those are going to be the two options that you have if you were to go that route and also if you went with one of those two that will also remove the rear spoiler and the added front lip that you would get with the Sport as well. But anywho, let's go ahead and make our way to the front of this one. HID Xenon headlights will come standard on every single trim level. I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of B-roll because I have the car off right now, but that is what they look like. Plenty of light up there. Just below that, LED daytime running lights. They look absolutely amazing on the 370Z. I gotta admit, as far as those headlights go back up there, automatic feature will also come standard on this one, of course, meaning when it starts to get dark out, those headlights will turn on automatically for you up there but sport trims and nismo is also going to add an added front lip up front and of course in the front you have that perfect timeless design 350 and 370z they have always looked amazing especially when you look from the side here you guys see those front fender arches of course are some rear fender arches around the wheels as well but it makes it look so freaking aggressive absolutely amazing look to it but let's let's now make our way to the side on this one. First thing i wanted to mention on the side is something that will differ ever so slightly depending upon the trim level is those side z marker emblems they're going to actually be illuminated if you went with the sport trim level and up otherwise you will just get simply a black z emblem like you were looking at right now in the space 370z that we have today but looks good but i would have loved to have seen those illuminated z emblems perhaps on a white 370z at night that would look absolutely amazing but anywho looking up a little bit when it comes to those side mirrors they are body colored power adjustable side mirrors for every single trim level and they will be heated side mirrors if you were to go with the sport trim level and up also, wanted to mention the aluminum door handle. I think this is one of the coolest features as well on the Z. Not only is it vertical, whereas most vehicles have those horizontal handles, but of course it is aluminum. So definitely stands out. It makes a statement. I actually love those door handles. I know it's the little things, but let's take a look down at the wheel setup. They are gonna be a staggered fitment, meaning they are a smaller width in the front than in the back. You will of course not be able to rotate those tires. So tread life will be little less than average i guess you could say but then again this is a traditional drift car so do you really care probably not but anywho standard setup what you're looking at right now 18 by 8 inches up front 18 by 9 inches in the back again that is that standard fitment if you were to go with the sport trim level and up and this is going to be an exception of the nismo of course but then you were going to have 19 by 9 inches in the front 19 by 10 inches in the back and they will be forged alloy wheels by raise engineering again with the sport trim level and up but if you were to go with the Nismo, kind of touching on all trim levels today here, up front you're going to find 19 by 9.5 inches, in the back 19 by 10.5 inches, so that 
is really where you're gonna wanna be at. But then again, you could just go with the sport trim level or even the base and upgrade the wheels and tires anyway. So a common thing and something I probably would do if I were to get the 370Z as I've done currently on my Mustang. But making our way to the back, rear spoiler, if you were interested, is gonna come with the sport trim levels and the Nismo. We of course do not have it here on the base 370Z today. LED taillights, they are gonna come standard on every single trim level and they look absolutely amazing. Just to the left and right of that, of course, there's rear fender arches also look amazing. But anyways, 370Z badging also can be found back there. And just below it all, making our way to the bottom, dual exhaust outlets with chrome tips for every single trim level. I did want to also add, if you were to go with the Nismo trim level, you're going to get an H-pipe configuration, an H-pipe tuned exhaust. So a little extra loudness there and a little extra exhaust scavenging for that one as well. But anywho, you guys know what's coming next. As always... Here it is, this ought to be a good one for you guys. Here is the 2020 Nissan 370Z exhaust clip. So now since we are around back, there's actually a couple different ways of opening the rear trunk of the Z. There is not a button on the key fob. However, there is a button in the back. There's also a button just behind the shifter here. Those are the two ways you're gonna be able to open up the hatch of the Z. But once opened up, cargo capacity is gonna come in at 6.9 cubic feet. So not an incredibly deep amount of space back there, but for the Z, for the car, for what it actually is, there is a decent amount of space, so it is nice that it's there. But typically, next, I'll make our way to the rear seats, but of course, the 370Z is a two-seater, so hooray, that is pretty cool. Make your way to the front seats then. An eight-way manually adjustable driver's seat will come standard. There is also a four-way manual passenger seat. Driver lumbar support is gonna come with the sport touring trim level as well as heated front seats up there. Cloth seats are gonna come with the base trim level we have today as well as the sport, and you will get less other seating if you were to go with the sport touring or the 50th anniversary edition actually they're going to give you leather as well and of course if you want with the nismo you're going to have a nice leather alcantara mixture going on and that is definitely quite comfortable as well i've reviewed the nismo a couple times already so very nice seating there and those are recaro bucket seats by the way in the nismo so extra bolstering added as well but now let's make our way to the startup here as far as the key design goes you do have your z logo at the very top as well as lock and unlock and it is actually all keyless entry though so feel free to just keep the key in your pocket walk up to the car and go ahead and just put your foot on the brake and clutch and there is an engine start button located just by the driver's right knee that is how you're going to start this one up but once started up tachometer is going to be front and center that is pretty cool speedometer is on your right and there's some extra information on the left in a unique looking gauge display over there but it's going to have your fuel information miles per gallon at any given time engine temp there's also some additional gauges just up top here as well giving you things like the oil temp battery info and the time of the day as well so that's pretty cool but overall when it comes to interior quality if you wanted home link controls meaning the garage door openers they are going to come with the sport touring and nismo trim levels those are always convenient because if you have a garage door and you go with the little thing that clips onto the sun visor that tends to rattle a little bit at highway speeds and really whenever you're driving. So it is kind of nice to have the home light controls up there. Also with the Sport Touring and Nismo trim levels, you're gonna have aluminum pedals as well. There of course is no moonroof available. Somebody is always going to ask that just like the Mustang, no moonroof available. So that is not gonna be there, but I will say everything is quite simple to use. It is most definitely more of a driver's car here in the Z. Another thing I really like is the driver's right knee here it is kind of a padded leather there so in case you were driving for long distances instead of a hard plastic it is going to be a nice soft leather there so that is good in a manual car i wanted to mention that to you guys also the climate control is going to be found right in front of the shifter right in front of the shifter also you have your hazard lights but perhaps the most interesting thing about this one is the tech display or in my case the lack of tech display if you went with the base 370z what you have there is storage that is just straight up storage if you open up that center area where you would think there would be a tech display. Again, that is just for the base 370Z. It's a decent amount of storage, I guess, but I would still personally prefer an infotainment display of some sort. And to get that, you will have to go with the Sport Touring or Nismo trim level. So even the Sport trim level is just going to give you that storage up there. But 
Anywho, seven inch color touchscreen display is gonna come with the Sport Touring and Nismo. All trims, however, are gonna give you Bluetooth. Bluetooth audio streaming is actually gonna come with the Sport Touring and Nismo. So that's kind of interesting that you don't have audio streaming in the base or Sport. But again, with those two trims, you're gonna have factory navigation system as well. No Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, unfortunately, on this one. And to control the radio just below that, you have some circular knobs and buttons straight from the early 90s. Again, this is more of a driver's car. So I'm not per se hounding the Z for that, but wouldn't have minded a little update there, but I'm sure it's coming eventually. And as far as that sound system goes, you're going to get six speakers if you were to go with the base Z that we have today. We will test that out in a second. If you went with the sport trim leveling up, you're going to find an eight speaker Bose premium sound system. But again, that's not the one we have today. So let's go ahead and turn off the air for a second so you guys can fully experience the six speaker sound system. And let's see what we got playing this morning. Body on the body, like a I could use a little bit more bass if I'm being honest, but still it is a smaller vehicle So you don't really need all that much of a sound system for a two-seater But it is adequate if you're just using the Z as more of a driver's car anyways Who really cares? But if you did want the eight-speaker Bose system go with the sport trim level and up It's there for you. Anywho, last thing I wanted to mention as far as the tech goes is When you do put the Nissan 370Z in reverse You will have a rear view camera for every single trim level which may have you asking Where in the heck is the rear view camera if you go with the base? or sport trim levels. Let me show you guys, and by the way, to put the Z in reverse, simply press down on the shifter and slide it into the back right-hand corner there. But once in reverse, it will either be displayed on the infotainment screen or the rear view mirror on the left side. This is a very cool looking rear view camera. Anywho, that is gonna let you know who or what is behind you, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so when it comes to safety, again, more of a driver's car, I'm gonna keep mentioning that. Front side and side curtain airbags, tire pressure monitoring system, traction control, and pretty much your basic safety features. No adaptive cruise control, no automatic emergency braking or anything like that essentially. And so, but anyways, that is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like the video and subscribe. If you are into new car reviews, that is what we do here on this channel. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen there, and I will see you guys in the next video. Stay gold.